Yo, it's Guido coming at you with the Tactic Stock, guys. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning in. Let's talk about how to win in this game. Let's talk about how to win. How, how do you win? You do a bunch of damage, man, and you do a bunch of kills. Yeah. Well, that's, that's part of it. I think the larger part of it, though, especially if you want consistent wins, right? If we want to talk a one-off, uh, how to win, one-off. Do 8,000 damage. All right, got it. That, that's, a, that's a good start. That's a good start. But over the long term, how do you win? Well, it's a good decision making. Whether that decision making helps you do damage or helps your team. What does that look like? Well, it looks like looking at the setup, the match that you have in front of you and making good decisions and then continuing to build on those good decisions. And if you make a bad decision, not letting that derail you and then try to move on to a better decision from there. So again, it's not whether you get lucky or un unlucky, it's what do you do with that luck or unluck. What do you do after that? This is a, a Himmel's proc, Procadorf here, and I've gone to the 5-6 line. Why did I go to the 5-6 line? Well, as I was talking, you saw everybody set out. There are three artillery, two M44s on each side, a grill on ours and a HMC, the Walmart M44, over on the other side, and nobody wants to go to the 5-6 line. Typical. I figure that it's almost every time I get into this map rarely do you see somebody go here when you get to the top tiers Tier 10 gameplay tier 9 you will see many more people go here because that's where the better players congregate and they understand the importance of this position Somebody will go here probably several somebody's but on lower tier maps like this You see things like this a lot a bunch of campers over here and yes You can see them in higher tier ones as well noted but what I saw developing was a massive stack of people over here Pretty typical, already in the back, standard 1H camper, 4H, and I don't know what T67 boy is doing back here. I don't even know if he has draw distance on the on the uh, hill. Maybe he does if they come up and over. I don't know. But this is pretty typical. So how do you win? What Long term, you make good decisions. I know this position is important. Nobody else is going there. Yes, there is Artie, but why sit on the 1-2 line or camp in the back and just throw your arms up and go, well, we're effed. Who cares? A lot of people go there. I mean, there's a lot of players that play that way. It is mentally taxing insofar as being mentally taxed in a pixel tank game is. But, you know, people have long days and they, they come home from work and maybe they don't want to think too hard about their pixel tank game. So they're going to hang out on the 1-2 line. Now, there's a lot of reasons. I just throw that one out as just one of them. But we and tend to get a lot of players that do stuff like that. So if you're, if you're asking yourself, how do I win long term? This is the stuff you have to do. I'm going here because I have to, somebody has to, and it might as well be me. I happen to be one of the better players probably in the game. Uh, sorry, this match, not the game. I'm a good player in the game, but in this match, more than likely, I'm, I'm one of, if not the best player on my team. But I always play the game like I am the best player on the team, even if I am objectively not the best player in the game. I, let's pretend I have XVM. I don't know what, what would possess me to do so, but if I did and everybody was purple and I was blue or whatever, I would still play my tank and my game like it was up to me to win. And that can be hard. You know, sometimes you're not in the right tank for it to be up to you to win. But I still play it that way. And that doesn't mean I take my artillery up to this position. Guido said play like you're the best player and play to win. So I'm going to take my M44 where, on the 5-6 line. That is not it at all. But if you're in the correct tank for the situation, I, here I am. Now you can tell the Super Chaffee is dead and we're having trouble over on the east side now. Right? That's a problem over there. The east side's a problem and I've noted that. The Excelsiors, to their credit, came to help me. I don't... Are these bots... You know, I just... I'm doing a video on bots. They seem to be... These may actually be two bots. Hold on. This is interesting because I just did a report on bots, so now I'm going to go ahead. Camera Shiver and Vessels Cup. App. <laughs> you just saw it, folks, real time. I just recognized that I have another four bots in this game. Vessels Cup, Camera, camera Shiver, Fennel 2021, and Catchy Actor. Cash Actor. Excellent. Well, when I am done with this video, I'm going to make another report to first I'll check and see if these bots are still in the game but they are very definitely bots I thought they were following me because I'm such a fantastic good player but this is just where they go <laughs> I 
Notice they just, I wondered why they came up and just sat there and didn't really do much of anything. Fantastic, those are definitely bots, but we'll, we'll look at that afterwards. I'm going to grab the cards, jump into the game clan, and see what's going on. Alright, back to how do you win this thing. It sucks you got bots on your team. It's actually a great thing to have in this video. What do you do? Well, they've got that covered at least for the moment. If we do get pushed on the 5-6 line, we'll know. But what else do I know about the 5-6 line or have a pretty good idea about? There doesn't seem to be any purples over there. There's no red purpley team guys over there. We lost the, the Chaffee like I talked about just a moment ago. So in the long run, how do you make more wins than losses? You make decisions like this one with the information you have, your OODA loop, whatever you want to call it, and you go do what has to be done. You go do what has to be done. Now I'm going to take the best approach I can over here because I sort of suspect they have a guy or two up there. There's still a lot of guns in the game. Both teams have only lost three. The one-two line is the same stagnant stupidity it usually is. I do go over there. I do like using scouts over there and trying to take on their campers and maybe uh, shred them all, but I'm not a scout. so And I'm also in the 5-6 line, so now I'm going to come over here. Look at these Celsius. <laughs> they've, they've retreated. The bots have... I've, I don't know if I've seen bots retreat. That's actually interesting. I wonder... I wonder what the coding is on that. Why did they do that? That's interesting. They're just sitting over there. Alright, we won't worry too much about what the bots are doing. I do find the ram here. I figured there was going to be somebody. I need to get rid of him. There are three artillery. I don't have time to be holed down there and play peekaboo. This is very important, guys. There's three artillery. I am pushing in here. I need him to go away. Why do I need him to go away? Again, decision making. Why do you? How do you turn more games into wins and losses. I don't have time to play peekaboom with him because there's three artillery and they're going to shred me. So I just push into him and get rid of that guy. Right now, we got a lot of guns going away. The other two Excelsiors got shredded on the 1-2 line, it looks like. Interesting. One of the bots is moving and the other one is finally has come up and over and is following him. <laughs> That's awesome. So we've killed the ram. I'm going to come up here and now I want to look and see what's going on. I only have 400 damage, 286 assist. The one-two line is surviving. We have a big advantage in guns. There's going to be a bit of a sniper line of ding dang. That was just pure RNG. Needed to get rid of him, so I take the shot. And I'm wondering, is there somebody up here, right? So like I said, I'm only, what, 400 damage. We'll get another kill on this near-dead Wolverine. Gotcha. That gets us three kills, only 500 damage, only 286 assist. But we didn't lose that flank, right? Hugely important. This game, this particular map for the game is one of the maps, I, one of the reasons I love this map so much is that you have to play it well on every side. Every side is important. Rarely does this game, this map, come down to one side or the other unless it's just a really massive romple stomp. I actually find the T6, another T67 right there, which blew my mind. Did not realize another, do they have another one or is that the yeah, I find the T67 over here. It's definitely turning into a win for us. It's going to be very difficult for the enemy team to come back from this. We'll go ahead and chase the T-67. But I ensured that this flank did not fall. Right? I ensured that this flank did not fall. So I looked at the match. I made an initial decision. I sort of have a good idea of what people generally are going to do. They generally don't like to be on the 5-6 line because it's hard to do. Right? It's hard to play that line. So I went there. That's the place I knew I had to go. I am considering myself the best player on the team, and somebody has to do it. I know I harp on this a lot, but it is the actual key. The mindset and doing these things is the actual key to the question of how do I make more of my matches wins than losses. It really is that simple while being that difficult. All right, The concept and the idea of it is very straightforward and easy. The execution is always the question on this. It's kind of like flying jets. I would tell people it's pretty easy to fly an Eagle jet, relatively. Take off, land, pull the stick back, trees get small, push forward, trees get larger, that kind of stuff. It is very difficult to employ it correctly. So it's easy to say, make good decisions. It's difficult to understand what those decisions are. And I just wanted to give you an example here of some decisions that's going to help you turn wins into losses. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, that's what I want to do. Turn wins into losses. Holy cow. Turn losses into wins. Was I the only thing in this game that caused us to win? Absolutely not. 
Sometimes you are, and that's fantastic. Sometimes, though, it's little things you've done to help win, making good decisions along the way, that is then leveraged by the rest of the team, or at least relieves the rest of the team from having other issues. In the case of this game, losing a whole flank, or simply not going to a very important spot in the map early on and causing issues from the very get-go, that is going to help your team turn things into a win. Sometimes it's those little things that you contribute. Sometimes it's the big things that you contribute. But the question is, are you always thinking about what those things are that's going to help this team win the game? I hope that helped, guys. Uh, you'll end up with four kills, 1,200 damage. Like I said, not the world's greatest game, but I think a pretty good example of thought processes, positioning places that I went to help this team turn this thing into a win. And bonus, I found four more bots that I can report. Fantastic. I'm going to go right now and see if they're actually still around. That is all I've got for today. Thanks for tuning in, guys, and the support of the channel. We will see ya.